Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a London man was able to recognize a multi-state theft crew after entering a local Walmart. And the new vehicle registration system continues to have difficulties five months into the program. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. We are coming up on 630 on Friday, May 3rd. Now let's go on ahead and send it over to meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. Temperature wise, lower 60s outside our door. Lost the night vision back into the daytime look of our web camera. Oh, how Things are looking beautiful outside our door. Temperature wise as warm as 70 in Jackson right now in the satellite litter composite showing how the showers are creeping closer to 75, losing their punch on the front edge of that shield of rain. And we're going to be dealing with more moisture being drawn northbound over not only today and tomorrow, but it looks like the next few days to come. So in the forecast for today, a partly sunny sky, scattered showers and a few thunder showers and a forecast high in between hours here up to 77 in hazard. We'll explain how persistent the pattern will be. Your first alert 70 forecast as we head through this half hour. All right, Olivia, back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. In northeastern Tennessee, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation has confirmed that they are investigating an inmate's death at the Campbell County Jail. Uh, according to the DBI, this marks the second inmate death investigation in less than two weeks. Representatives with TBI told our sister station in Knoxville that 26 year old Faith Evans died while in custody Monday morning. The TBI has not released Evans cause of death as the investigation is still ongoing. A man accused of murdering a woman in Madison County in a Madison County mansion has been found competent to stand trial. That ruling came during a hearing last week for Shannon Gilday following a psychiatric evaluation. Police say he broke into former state representative Wesley Morgan's home in 2022 and killed Morgan's daughter Jordan while she was asleep. Wesley Morgan was also injured. Gilday is scheduled to stand trial next May. An Eastern Kentucky mother charged with the death of her 17 month old daughter is requesting a change of venue for her trial. Erica Lawson of Bell County claims media coverage has altered public opinion. Lawson is charged with murder. Her daughter Elena died of serious injuries in July. At the time, officials said they had never seen a case of child abuse so severe. Yesterday, we heard from a London Walmart associate who helped stop a multi-state theft ring. Police say the well-trained crew originated from Eastern Europe. They caught the attention of Jacob Benj, who helps with loss prevention. He had heard the crew was possibly heading north after complaints in Corbin and Williamsburg. So when he spotted them inside the store, he stopped them immediately. As soon as they had a bad feeling about it, they started to leave, um, at which point I just sort of stopped them and talked to them and asked them how they were doing. Bench says the team could steal anywhere from thousands of dollars up to seven figure amounts. We are still working to learn the identities of the people connected to the scam. A Kentucky judge will not remove a court order that's been blocking executions in the state for more than a decade. In a ruling, the judge said he will not overturn the ban because there have been several changes to lethal injection regulation since 2010 when the ban took effect. The judge says there is constitutional questions about the new regulations that have to be settled. Kentucky Attorney General Russell Coleman says the ban should be lifted so that families of victims can see justice. Right now, there are about two dozen inmates on Kentucky's death row. A London man is in jail after police say they found him carrying meth. Police received a complaint about a man walking in the middle of the road with a white bag. 
Officers were able to find 52 year old Charles Miller just outside of the city limits. Miller was found in possession of meth. He was charged with possession of a controlled substance and taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. Police say this was Miller's second offense for carrying meth. A Laurel County man is behind bars after police say he pushed a woman into a wall at a home off Walter Eversole Road. It happened Wednesday afternoon when sheriff's deputies responded to a complaint about an assault. During an investigation, police learned 22 year old David Castile reportedly got into a verbal argument with the woman, which led to him pushing her. Castile was charged with assault and was taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. A Knott County man is facing charges after police say he was stalking an officer's wife in a store in Perry County. On April 15th, Hazard Police received a complaint about the incident. 56-year-old David Sloan said he took some photos of the woman, then pulled out his phone and deleted one of the photos. Sloan was later taken to the police department for an interview. Police discovered Sloan had multiple videos filming of women on his phone. Officials in Perry County have signed a mutual aid agreement to improve emergency response in the county. WYMT's RJ Johnson explains. Working to improve communication among first responders, Perry County officials have signed a mutual aid agreement for emergency situations. Judge Executive Scott Alexander says following the July 2022 flood nearly two years ago, they wanted to find a way to ensure they are moving forward. We realized that if we had the joint aid uh, with the state, then all of our first responders could communicate uh, at the same time, and we think that could possibly even make it better. You know, they've they done an amazing job uh, during the floods, but we're always looking to see how we can grow and how we can become better. He says having different agencies in the county all on the same page can have a big impact on responding to those situations. And, and when you've got all of them on the same channel and can hear what each agency is doing, it makes their uh, response times and interactions uh, in the disaster much better. Alexander says they hope other counties also create mutual aid agreements, which would enable them to work better together. Yes, it definitely could, and, and we're always looking to help our neighbors, and then we're always looking to work with our neighbors, and they're always willing to help us. And so as each one of us does better, it could potentially help our neighbors to do better as well. Adding through trainings, they know all too well the importance of quick response times. We, and we've learned through our uh, trainings uh, in, in active shooter situations uh, in facilities and stuff that by having our first responders being able to communicate, then they can uh, address that situation much quicker and, and much better. With hopes of keeping the community safer. In Hazard, RJ Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. Alexander says the fiscal court will purchase the new radios with a grant of nearly $100,000. We are getting a first look at new fully functioning tornado sirens in Powell County. Officials say several of the life saving tools didn't work during a severe weather outbreak last month. Larry Hall, the director of the Powell County 911 Center, says in just three weeks time, they have 11 of the county's 12 sirens fully operating. These sirens are a great tool, especially for the tourists that we have. We have one in the Natural Bridge area. Uh, one of these sirens is at a local school, uh, the Bowen Elementary. Uh, they're, they're widespread, you know, because Powell County's rural. Hall says they're also working with local landowners who have offered up their properties as the home site of potential new sirens. This would provide more coverage to more rural parts of the county. It's been five months since the new vehicle registration system, KVIS, was introduced across the state. County clerks are saying they are still seeing some issues following the transition. Estill County Clerk Kimberly Charles says they've been seeing some of the problems firsthand. There's been issues with the renewals getting sent out late. There's been some issues with some of the numbers balancing. Um, it's been it's been a tough transition for a lot of the clerks. One woman in Madison County says she was one that received her renewal card late. She says she is now ha now having to deal with the possibility of paying late fees because she was not informed about how to renew her tag. 
Madison County Clerk Kenny Barger says late penalties will be waived. And we have a pair of traffic alerts to pass along in Perry County. Kentucky 699 at mile point 10.095 will be closed next Tuesday at 8 a.m. until the following day at 10 p.m. This is near the intersection of Holbrook Lane and Deep Hole Branch Road. And Kentucky 7 at mile point 11.3 will be closed on May 14th from 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. the next day. The road closings are due to railroad crossing repairs. The historic engineer bridge in Corbin has been in use for decades, but recently it has shown needs of some renovations. Officials were up to the task and able to finish the work after a couple weeks. Jeff Nance, who is the public works director with the city of Corbin, says the reason they decided to work on the bridge was because it was getting to a point where it was too dangerous. The reason why we had to shut it down is that it was kind of getting where it was unsafe. The boards was getting unsafe, you know, and uh, I was worried somebody might fall, fall through. So we shut it down and uh, we went through our board and uh, got everything approved to get it fixed. So. Now that the bridge has opened back up, officials hope it will be a huge relief for the community. The pedestrian bridge is used for different activities in that area. A good Friday to you, almost into the weekend. Let's get you ready to head out the door. Temperature wise, we're in the 60s region wide, as warm as 70 in Jackson and a bit cooler as you make your way toward Clintwood, sitting at uh, 55. All right, here's a satellite weather composite showing uh, a lot of clouds across the Commonwealth this morning. Showers creeping closer to 75, losing their punch at least on the leading edge here. And as we head through time, we'll continue to see this moisture be drawn up into eastern and southern Kentucky. And that means scattered showers and a few thunder showers, not only for the morning drive into work and school, but also on the drive home as well. We'll get up to 77 for the daytime high and hazard. More about the weekend forecast that's coming up in just a few moments. Olivia. Thanks, Tim, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 640 still to come on Mountain News this morning. President Biden has a new critique of protesters as police in Oregon move in to clear out yet another campus protest.